That was a fun World Cup. I enjoyed that. But now we're back to FPL Game Week 17. Hi, I'm Midnight Mule. Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. In this video, I'm going to look back at what happened in Game Week 16, which was a very long time ago, and then look forward to my current ideas for Game Week 17, which are bound to change, but it's what I'm currently thinking. Just before I get to that, I'd like to say I thought it was a very good World Cup. And you'll notice I didn't put out any content for the World Cup fantasy because I know precious little about the international players and the international scene. So I thought I'll play the game, but I'll not put anything out. And my goal was to finish top 50% overall and I managed just outside the top 1%. So that was quite nice. Certainly beat some of the content creators I'm aware of out there who are doing the World Cup. But back to the FPL because that's what we all care about. So game week 16, who was the top scorer in the Midnight Mule FPL League? It was Chewy099. That was the name of the team. The name of the person is Chewy G. So I assume it's an Asian person. <laughs> I hope that's not racist. That's not racist. And of course it could be a made up name. Who knows? They got 83 points. This was their team. They did play their bench boost. But I reckon if you think a team, if you think a player gets two points on average and you play them in a double game week, that's four points. You have four on the bench. That's 16 points. So as long as you get at least 16 points when you play the bench boost, that's kind of all right. And Chewy got 25 points on the bench. So I kind of think it was OK. And not only was it OK, they got mentioned on this video, so it doesn't get much better than that. They had Kane as captain, who got 11 points. That became 22. Most of us had Haaland as captain, who got one, so he got two. So choosing Kane was a very good move. Possibly a bit, I wasn't say lucky. That was a good punt. A good, uh, good thing to risk there. So well done, Chewy. As for the top of the league, it's still... <laughs> get ready for this. Skogs Glanton IF, I think, which is Jacob Eriksson. Currently on 978 points, but you'll see they only scored 39 points. They're giving us all a chance to catch up with him. So that's very kind of you, Jacob. So thank you for that. This is how his team looked. He had Kane on 11, but he captained Haaland, who only got two. Nothing special anywhere else. Trippier 7, Martinelli 6, Almiron 6. But of course, game week 17, we get to change as many players as we like. So I'm sure we'll all be looking forward to seeing how well and how much Jacob changes his team because we've all got to follow our leader. On the bench, Ward with 11. But again, I had Ward on the bench for 11, whereas he played Edison for 2. And there was nothing else much on the bench worth talking about. I'm way down in 38th at the moment. I got... 44 points. I'm on 872 in total. Nothing special with my team. Darwin got 13. That was nice. But apart from that, nothing special anywhere. My bench, Ward got 11 and Smith got 8. So I got the bench wrong. But it happens sometimes. At least I've got players that were playing. Bueno got 0, but he did play. So he's. I quite like Bueno as a bench sitter. So 44 points. The average globally was 43. But as you'll see, I still got a red arrow because around the 1.6 million mark, which is where I'm at at the moment, 44 is just not good enough. So there's a little red arrow. But that's OK. We've got ages to go yet. So I'm not even slightly nervous about that. Uh, so overall, I'm 21 points behind the 1 million rank. I'm 62 ahead of the 4 million rank. 65 behind 200,000. Long, long way to go yet. So not the least bit nervous. Heading for the top 2.5%, I still got a pretty good chance of doing it, I think. And these next three weeks, this is an important point, the next three weeks we've got three game weeks very close together. There'll be some people that will forget to set their team. Some people will forget to set their wildcard team, effectively game week 17 properly. There will be some people that drink a little bit over Christmas and they may do some rage transfers or some really crazy transfers. So just by Playing sensibly for the next three game weeks, I think we've all got a chance, who's playing sensibly, to move up a little bit. So that was, that was a bit of an aside there. Nothing to do with the football tactics, just the fact that people playing FPL may do some silly moves the next three weeks while they're enjoying Christmas. Or maybe they'll be at their relatives and be very, very bored and middle. That's another good thing for the rest of us But if they do that. 253 subs, I'm pretty happy with that. Over the World Cup, I think we got another four subs. So I was surprised at that. Thank you very much. If you like this sort of thing, please do make sure you sub. Maybe even give it a like. 
overall for the content creators league ross fpl raptors still top doing very well harry who i also follow is down in fifth so well done then I actually got to meet them both in manchester recently at the fpl meets that was good they're they're both good characters i like them both very much and then i'm down in 53rd and the only good thing to say about that is it's slightly above fpl mate but i know he's having an extremely bad season by his standards but hey you know you gotta take victories where you can so as you will know if you've seen my channel before when i do transfers i like to take a four week view and so over the next four weeks was the transfer worth it so game week 14 i took a minus four when i took out bowen and Solanke, and i brought in rashford and darwin and then game week 14 15 16 this is how many points they got and as you'll see the players I got rid of got 19 points. The players I brought in got 34. So over the three game weeks, because of course 17 we start again, it was a net gain of 11 points. So even though I took a four point hit, it was absolutely worth it. Game week 15, I took an eight point hit and I only had two weeks of course to make it up, 15 and 16. I got rid of Zaha, Billing and Mitrovic and brought in Trossard, Almron and Wilson. And game week 15, that worked against me. Game week 16, the three I got rid of didn't get any points. And the three I brought in got nine between them. So overall, the three players I brought in got four points more than the three players I took out. But it cost me eight, so it was a minus four overall. So that particular move wasn't worth it. But if you look back at my previous videos where you'll see me looking at these transfers I've made, it's been worth it overall easily. Taking the hits is right now you could argue of course my team is bad to start with so i'm just taking out rubbish to bring in mediocre players so it doesn't mean it's necessarily the right thing to do but for me it's worth it and it's only a game so this is my team how it looks at the moment i'm going to show you each player one at a time the first ones i show you are the ones that i'm most likely to either keep or buy and as we go down they're less and less certain so my final team is almost certainly going to be different to this but this is where i'm at at the moment Haaland at the front no one really cares or you shouldn't care too much if he gets loads of points or no points because nearly everyone has him and of course he's going to be my captain so he gets to wear the old mule hat there we go he gets to wear the old mule hat he's captain it doesn't matter if he gets one point or a hundred points everyone has him it's not going to really make any difference my next most likely player to keep is Ward in goal he's very very cheap first choice of course I'm going to keep him and then probably Trippier, Newcastle defender. I've seen some teams that people are saying they're going to play for 17 and they've missed out Trippier because of what the upcoming fixtures are. But I think he could get a return in any game. So kind of have to keep Trippier. Kepa in goal. I'm almost certainly going to buy Kepa as my second keeper. But I'll probably play him as my first keeper most of the time and probably have Ward on the bench. I don't think Ward is a brilliant keeper, but I think Leicester have got a very good defence at the moment. And if you saw Ward for Wales, I'd say he wasn't especially good. Uh, so I'm probably going to play Kepa most weeks as my first choice with Ward on the bench. But Ward being first choice means he's always going to be there if I need him. Almiron, very, very cheap. Uh, he's been good for the first 16 weeks. Will he keep it up? We'll find out. But he's cheap. Martinelli, I bought him, as I'm sure most of you did, right at the beginning. So he's worth keeping. It says 6.4 there. That's because this is from the transfers page. That's what I'd get if I sold him. It actually costs more than that if you're looking to buy him. Uh, Darwin. Currently got Darwin. I'll probably keep him. He's my only asset I've got for Liverpool. So maybe a little bit risky there. I know a lot of people are on Salah and maybe one of the defenders too. But Darwin should be playing all the games if he stays fit and doesn't get a red card. So I think he's uh, certainly worth having Mitrovic he's cheap Fulham do have a double game week coming up he is on four yellow cards so I'm aware that's putting some people off Mitrovic because what if he gets banned either on the first double week game which I think might be against Leicester or the game before that in which case it's no longer a double game week but what if he doesn't get a yellow card then and he is cheap and so he enables to get other players elsewhere Cancelo I will probably keep Man City it'd be very good to try and have three Man City players over the next three weeks Cancelo next to uh, maybe De Bruyne and Edison are probably the most likely to be playing week after week so although he's a lot more than the other Man City 
defenders, he's probably the most likely to start and he can still sometimes get up there and get an assist or the occasional goal. Andreas, I, I had Andreas right at the beginning of the season and I got rid of him, which of course was a mistake. But he's very cheap and he enables me to spend money elsewhere. So he'll sit on my bench most of the time, but I'll always be happy if he comes on. That's not a problem. Fernandez, I'm aware not a lot of people are getting Fernandez, but I really like him. And now with Ronaldo gone, I think there's a chance he'll be back to how he was pre-Ronaldo, which was absolutely brilliant. It may take a few weeks to get around to it. We don't know how Eric Ten Hag's going to be playing the system, how he's going to be doing it. But at the moment, I'm thinking Fernandez is worth a punt. I've got De Bruyne as well. I think De Bruyne is a bit of a cheat, really. De Bruyne is not a cheat. Man City having De Bruyne is a cheat. It's He is so good. <laughs> he's such a good player. It's like whenever they play De Bruyne, it's like they're cheating because he's so much better than anyone else. I know Haaland's getting in the goals, but De Bruyne is excellent. The trouble with having De Bruyne and Fernandes and Haaland is I don't really have much money elsewhere. But... I have to have Haaland. That's kind of, I haven't got a choice with that. And I really want Fernandes. So if I lose any of those three at the moment, it would probably have to be De Bruyne as much as I really want to have him. And then Bueno, I've got him at the moment. He's first choice for Wolves at the moment. He'll probably be third on my bench all the time. But if he comes in, that's okay. He's quite attacking. He's okay. I'm happy to have him. Although he, <laughs> he may get minus one, zero, one, two most weeks. But he's cheap, so he enables other things. Had to get two other cheap defenders. Got Luke Shaw. United's first fixtures are quite good. He may be all right. I'm aware Martinelli will be missing, so they may leak goals. But he can take corners. He can get an assist. And I've got White. So that is my provisional squad at the moment. It may well change. It probably will change. The thing is, hang on, I just get off the screen. So I think there are two different types of players let's boil it down two different type of managers they could have exactly the same data exactly the same intelligence the same everything but one could be optimistic one could be pessimistic so one might find it very easy to pick the starting well starting 11 squad of 15 the other one finds it hard and it depends on your viewpoint if you take the viewpoint of i want to get 15 players and have no duffers in there or definitely no duffers in the first 11 there are so many good players it's quite easy to do. It's very easy to choose 11 players that are quite good and probably going to do quite well. That's the optimist. The pessimist is going to worry that they're missing out this player, missing out that player. And you could choose any squad, doesn't matter how good it is. You'll be very, it's very easy to see, oh, why haven't you got this player? Why haven't you got that player? But the truth is, over a number of weeks, a player might do well, might not do well. So you, you want to buy a player, commit to them, hold them for a few weeks. If they don't get a red card and don't get injured, that's the way I look at it. I like to keep players for at least four weeks and just see how it goes. So I'm kind of torn between the two. I'm On the one side, it's very difficult because I'm going to be missing all these players. On the other hand, just get a load of players that are going to play and be all right. I'm only heading for top 2.5% anyway, so I should be all right. Anyway, it's nice to be back. I hope you miss me a little bit. And um, I'll put out my final team, I hope, before Boxing Day. Not sure when that would be. But there we go. Thanks for watching. Oh, and if you got this far, well done. I'll try and remember to put a link up for the FPL meets where Raptor was in the arcades and he got a good headshot. All right, thanks. Bye.